Welcome to Anywhere Math, I'm Jeff Jacobson, and today we're gonna to be comparing and graphing ratios. Let's get started. All right, for example one, we're gonna talk about one of my all-time favorite afternoon snacks, and that's chips and salsa. Now, a lot of people can't handle spicy foods, and so they usually buy the mild salsa, but for me, I love spicy foods, so I actually like to add extra hot sauce into the salsa. So if I'm having salsa with some friends, I'll make a batch for me and a batch for my friends. So for this, we're gonna do two bowls of salsa. In the first bowl, we're gonna put five tablespoons of hot sauce with three cups of salsa. In the second bowl, we're gonna do seven tablespoons of hot sauce and four cups of salsa. Now, the question is, which bowl is gonna be hotter? Okay, so example one, which mixture is hotter? That's what we're trying to figure out. So basically, we're comparing two different ratios. Uh, we're comparing with hot sauce and salsa, so those are going to be my two rows. So again, bowl one, we had five tablespoons of hot sauce for every three cups of salsa. Okay. Now, over here, I'm going to write bowl two, and that, again, I'm going to have my, I'll just call it HS hot sauce and my salsa. And this one again was seven tablespoons of hot sauce for every four cups of salsa. Now, to be able to compare these, uh, it helps to be able to compare having the same quantity. I can't compare which one's hotter because this has only three cups of salsa, but this has four cups of salsa. So yeah, we have more hot sauce, but there's also more salsa to kind of absorb all that hot sauce, right? So I want to compare with the same amount of salsa in each and then see which one has more hot sauce. And that'll tell me which one's hotter. So if I'm looking at three and four, well, what's the least common multiple of three and four? Well, hopefully you realize 12. 12 would be my least common multiple of three and four. So that's where I want to go for both of those. Really, I want both of them at 12 so I can compare. Well, to get from 3 to 12, I just times 4. So for hot sauce, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to times that by 4 to make it equivalent, right? I want equivalent ratios. 5 times 4 gives me 20 tablespoons of hot sauce in this mixture with 12 cups of salsa. Now over here, bowl two, how do I get from four cups of salsa to 12 cups? The easiest way is times three. So for my hot sauce, I'm gonna triple the amount of hot sauce. Seven times three is 21 tablespoons of hot sauce. Now that they both have the same amount of cups of salsa, I can compare which one's hotter. 20 tablespoons of hot sauce in bowl one, but 21 tablespoons of hot sauce in bowl two. That one extra tablespoon of hot sauce means bowl two is the hotter uh, mixture. Bowl two. Let's try another example. Okay, example two. Which bag of dog food is the better buy? So if we look over here, we see two different amounts of dog food uh, for two different prices we have to see which one's the better buy. So we have a 20 pound bag uh, of dog food for $17.20. We also have a 30 pound bag for $25.20. Now obviously the 30 pound bag is, more, is gonna be more expensive, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's the better buy. Now to compare them, we're gonna do the same thing. Let's make a ratio table. This is the same thing as before. I've got two different amounts. I can't compare which one's the better buy unless I'm comparing the same amount. So one thing I could do is I could find, just like we did before, the least common multiple 
which in this case would be 60, but I'm not gonna do it that way. Instead, I'm gonna compare their unit rates. So I wanna get to one. What does it cost for just one pound of dog food for each bag? So to do that, from 20 to one, well, I'm dividing by 20. So here, I also want to divide by 20. So that costs 86 cents per pound. From 30 to one, I need to divide by 30. So I'm going to divide by 30 here. I want to make sure I'm keeping it equivalent, equivalent rates here. So that's 0 0.84 or 84 cents per pound. Sorry about that. 84 cents per pound here. Well, now that we're comparing both as unit rates, how much it costs per pound, you can see that the better buy is obviously going to be the 30 pound bag, and it's actually two cents cheaper per pound. Okay? Here's some to try on your own. Okay, example three. A hot air balloon rises nine meters every three seconds. A blimp rises seven meters every two seconds. Which rises faster? Use a ratio table to compare. So let's see, let's just continue. So every three seconds, we're adding another nine meters. So next would be six seconds is at 18 meters. Nine seconds would be at 27 meters. Uh, 12 seconds would be at 36 meters. Okay, and I'll stop there. Um, next, four seconds would be at 14 meters. Six seconds would be at 21 meters. I'll go another one. Eight seconds would be at uh, 28 meters. So with this, hopefully you can see that there is a time that is the same in both. Okay. I'll just circle here. At six seconds, the balloon was 18 meters high. Here, at six seconds, the blimp was 20 meters high. So the question is, which rises faster? Well, given the same amount of time, the blimp is higher up, so that would mean the blimp rises faster. That was part A, now let's try part B. All right, here's our last example. So part B, same example three, graph the ordered pairs, the time and then the height from part A that we already did, uh, and what can you conclude? If we think about an ordered pair, time is going to represent my x-coordinate. That's going to go along my x-axis time. And then height is going to be my y-coordinate. Uh, here is my coordinate plane. I need to label it. So like I said, my x-axis is going to be time. I'm going to label that here, time. And most of the time, most of the time, anytime you have time, it does tend to go on your x-axis. Uh, my y-axis, I'm going to label as height, just like that. And again, time, I, I should also add, that's in seconds. Height is in, let's see, what was it, meters? So now we got to think, well, what do I want to be counting by? Uh, the seconds was pretty simple. I think we can easily just count by ones. Now, the height's a little trickier. Uh, if you remember, we were going nine meters every three seconds, and the blimp was, I think, seven meters every two seconds. So that was kind of jumping quite a lot. Maybe we'll go by fours instead, just because it's going to take us a while if we went just by uh, ones. Now, let's graph it. Uh, both of these are going to start at zero, zero, right? When you think about it, zero time happens, they're on the ground, right? They haven't gone anywhere in the area. So they're both going to start at zero, zero. I'm going to have two lines, one for the, for the hot air balloon and one for the blimp. So I would suggest using two different colors. Let's do the hot air balloon first. So again, every three seconds, it was climbing nine meters, right? Three seconds, nine meters. So we're starting at zero, zero. That's here. Three seconds, it was at nine meters. 
Okay. I can label that. That's at three, nine. The next one, again, six seconds is going to be at 18. That's six, 18. Just pretend that's a straight line. Yeah, I'm going to have a key right here. The black is the hot air balloon. Next, with the blue, we're going to do the blimp. And the blimp, uh, every two seconds, rows seven meters. So two seconds. Again, we're starting here, zero, zero. Two seconds went up to seven. And that's going to be two, seven. Blue was the blimp. There's our graph. The question, what can you conclude? Well, we can conclude that because this blue line, the line for the blimp is steeper, that's the slope. We're talking about the slope. You'll figure that out later. Uh, but it's steeper. That means the blimp rises faster than the hot air balloon, which is exactly what we talked about in part A. Here's one more to try on your own. As always, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this video, please subscribe.